the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal mysteries, we may be gladdened by the full effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord. As certain as the dawn is he coming, and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like the rain, like spring rain, that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this season I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice and knowledge of God rather than burnt offering. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled. O God, you will not spurn. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocausts. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, today in our Gospel from St. Mark, uh, we hear this familiar story through the parable that Jesus is addressing uh, to those, as the scriptures say, uh, are convinced of their own righteousness. And we see there is the Pharisee and the tax collector. And these two individuals, as presented in St. Luke's Gospel this morning, really represent uh, two ways in which we can approach God, not only in our prayer and in the offering of our sacrifices, but really in our daily disposition and in our relationship with God himself. And of course, we hear the Pharisee on one end who is following all of the prescriptions of the law perfectly, and abiding by every letter of the law, but yet in his heart is not contrite. Versus the Pharisee who, excuse me, versus the tax collector who, unlike the Pharisee, is one who is seen and recognizes his own limitations, his own sinfulness, and even self-imposes upon him even a physical limitation in regards to offering prayer and worship. But throughout, he is contrite of heart, and his supplication to God is really a supplication that is asking for mercy through his own recognition of his human frailty, his sinfulness, and really in many ways his unworthiness. And Jesus reminds us that indeed the role and the model that the Pharisee provides for us is the way in which we are to be properly disposed not only for our prayers and in our striving to grow in holiness, but it really is the way in which we are to enter into the world with that great sense of humility. And of course, as we journey through this Lenten season and now conclude this third week of Lent, we are reminded again in these Gospels that as Jesus teaches us through parables and through his uh, sayings, he also teaches us, most importantly, through his own actions. And Jesus, throughout his entire public ministry, displays for us how we must be humble. And in, of course, these times, uh, we have come to recognize that even more uh, with some of the constraints that have been placed upon us. Uh, we have been humbled in many ways, maybe not all the time necessarily by our own self-imposition, and that's not bad. But how do we deal with whether it is self-imposed or imposed from outside? How do we deal with that? And how do we allow that to make us grow in holiness? How do we allow it to be more predisposed to God's grace, not becoming angry, dissatisfied, disgruntled, but rather accepting it? And Jesus teaches us by his own example how he, in humility, accepts the will of God. And all of us uh, today, as we are facing these current challenges, are learning how to hopefully better accept the conditions that are around us. But just like these conditions, we know too that God is there and is present. 
and that this present moment and this present time, just as it was for even Jesus himself, is but a moment, as I so often say, in light of the glory that God promises. And as we continue our Lenten journey, we are reminded that indeed, if we carry the cross with humility, if we open ourselves up to be better predisposed for God's grace, God will bless us with abundance. He will pour out upon us the magnificence of his grace. And so let us remind ourselves today of the beautiful response to our psalm. It is mercy I desire, not sacrifice, recognizing that true mercy and that contrite, penitent heart is the most pure sacrifice we can offer to God. And it is that sacrifice that we unite today in this holy sacrifice of the Mass and in the Eucharist we are about to celebrate. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now present our petitions to the Lord our God, who desires our honest and open prayers. Let us pray that all members of the Church may grow in love and knowledge of God through His grace and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That judges, juries, and law enforcement officials may be guided by God in balancing judgment with mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord may heal and bind up the wounds of those injured or recovering from surgery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those throughout the world whose hearts are experiencing despair, May they be blessed with the consolation of God's peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our sick, for the homebound, for the hospitalized, for the suffering and the dying, and particularly all of those who are affected by this current outbreak, the Lord may continue to grant them grace, give them strength, health, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Hear our prayer. And let us pray for all of our personal intentions, for all of the needs we've placed in our parish book of prayer, for our special Lenten intentions, and for all those needs we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring before the Lord today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us remember in a special way Patricia Phillips, and for all of the faithful departed who have died, that God may grant them now eternal rest and peace in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the prophets, you call us back to you this Lent, in need of your healing and your merciful love. Grant these our prayers and all of the petitions we have placed before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, by whose grace it comes to pass that what we may approach in your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handling them on, we may offer you fitting homage through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, Contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The tax collector stood at a distance, beating his breast and saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us pray. May we truly revere, O oh merciful God, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us, and may we always partake of them with an abundance of faith in our heart. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. 
Hold out your faithful people, Lord, the right hand of heavenly assistance, that they may seek you with all your heart and merit the granting of what they ask. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to